Hello and welcome to the third part of our course Semiconductor Devices and Materials. In this lecture, we will talk about carrier transport phenomena in semiconductor materials. The point to be noted, this lecture corresponds with the fifth chapter of the book Semiconductor Physics and Devices by Donald Neiman. In the previous lecture, we have talked about the semiconductor in equilibrium condition and also determined the electron and hole concentrations in conduction and valence bands. A firm understanding of the densities of these charged particles is important toward an understanding of electrical properties of a semiconductor material. The net flow of the electrons and holes in a semiconductor will generate currents. The process by which these charged particles flow is called transport. In this lecture, we will talk about two basic transport mechanisms in a semiconductor crystal. They are drift mechanism and diffusion mechanism. In the case of drift mechanism, the movement of charge takes place due to external electric fields. And in the case of diffusion mechanism, the flow of charge is due to density gradients or the difference of carrier concentration in different parts of the semiconductor. Let's start our discussion with the first mechanism which is carrier drift. If an electric field is applied to a semiconductor, it will produce a force on both the electrons and holes of the semiconductor and they will experience a net acceleration and thus a net movement if there are available energy states in conduction and valence bands. This net movement of charge due to the applied electric field is called the drift and the net drift of the charge gives rise to a drift current. You may have noticed that whenever we are talking about these transport mechanisms, we are talking about charge carriers. That means both the drift phenomena and diffusion phenomena are common to electrons and holes. So we will talk about the drift mechanism of both holes and electrons but we will start our discussion with the hole drift. Let's consider a positively charged hole in the presence of an electric field E. The equation of motion of such a hole will be represented by this equation. In this equation, mp star is the effective mass of the hole, A is acceleration. We know from the Newton's law that the applied force on this hole will be F equals to mp star multiplied by A. Also, because this hole is in an electric field E, we can say that the applied force F will be also equal to the multiplication of the charge of the hole E multiplied by the applied electric field capital E. For a constant electric field, we can expect that the velocity will increase linearly with time. That's because if E is fixed, then F will be fixed and if F is fixed, in turn A will be fixed. Fixed A or fixed acceleration means the velocity will increase linearly with time. However, this is not the case because in practical scenarios, charged particles in the semiconductor will be involved in collisions with ionized atoms and thermally vibrating lattice atoms while movement. So a hole will experience a series of acceleration, collision, acceleration, collision and thus through this process we will achieve an average drift velocity VDP. VDP is hole drift velocity. Now at low electric fields, the hole drift velocity will be directly proportional to the applied electric field. So VDP is proportional to E. In this equation, you can see that the whole drift velocity VDP is a multiplication of mu P and E. Here E is the applied electric field and mu P is of course, as you can guess, is the proportionality constant. This mu P is called whole mobility and its unit is centimeter square per volt second. The mobility is an important parameter of the semiconductor since it describes how well a particle will move due to an electric field. In a material with larger mu p, the holes will move faster in the presence of the same electric field compared to a material where the mu p is less. An overview of how we achieve this unit of mobility. In our case, we will always consider the unit of velocity to be centimeters per second instead of meters per second and the applied electric field 
E as an unit, volt per centimeter. So if you divide centimeters per second by volt per centimeter, you will achieve this unit of centimeters per volt second. Now as we know the average drift velocity of the hole, we can now determine the whole drift current density. The drift current density will be equal to the charge density multiplied by velocity. You can understand this equation somewhat to common sense. As the current is the flow of charge and the current will be higher if the charge flows faster. That's why the drift current density is proportional to the velocity. The higher the velocity, the higher the current density. Now we have already determined the average drift velocity of holes which is VDP. But what about the charge density? We denote hole concentration in a material with small p. As you can see, p is the concentration of holes. So what is hole concentration? Hole concentration is simply the number of holes in an unit volume. So if an unit volume, there are p holes and each hole has a charge of E, then total charge in that volume will be E multiplied by P or EP. That's why the charge density is EP, velocity is VDP, and as we know, VDP is equal to mu P multiplied by E. That's why the drift current density for holes, JP drift, will be EP mu P E. Here, E is the charge of a hole. P is whole concentration of a material, mu P is the whole mobility of that material and capital E is external electric field. As you can see, the sign here is positive, that's why the drift current due to holes is in the same direction as the applied electric field. What we have discussed so far regarding hole drift mechanism is equally valid for electron drift mechanism except some obvious differences of holes and electrons. In the case of electron drift mechanism, the drift current density will be equal to the charge density due to electrons multiplied by the drift velocity of the electron. We have represented the drift velocity of holes with VDP. That's why the electron drift velocity is denoted by VDN. Here N denotes the electron. And the charge density here will be minus EN. That's because N is the electron concentration and each electron has a charge of negative E. That's why charge density is minus En. Now what is Vdn? In a similar process as we discussed in the case of hole, the Vdn or electron drift velocity will be a multiplication of applied electric field and electron mobility mu n. There is a negative sign in front. This negative side denotes that electrons will move in the opposite direction of the electric field. That's why there is a negative sign. So if we multiply them, we will get the drift current density due to electron drift mechanism will be E n mu n e, where e is the absolute value of charge of an electron, n is electron concentration, mu n is electron mobility, and e is applied electric field. Now you may ask, why is there no minus sign in front? Because in the case of whole drift current, we are getting positive. So in the case of electron drift, we should get a negative sign here. But you are missing something. Unlike holes, electrons move in the opposite direction of the electric field. But as we know, but as we know, the current due to the movement of electron is in the opposite direction. That means even though the electrons will move in the opposite direction of the applied electric field, but the current density or the current due to this electron drift will be in the same direction as the electric field. So total drift current density J drift will be a sum of the drift current density due to holes and electrons. If you just put the values of JN drift and JP drift, you will reach this conclusion, which is E multiplied by N mu N plus P mu P multiplied by applied electric field E. In our discussion, we have encountered some new parameters, which are hole and electron mobility, electron mobility denoted by mu N and hole mobility denoted by mu P. The typical values of these mobilities are shown in this chart. You can expect that you will be provided with these values, but it's always a good approach to memorize some of these values to save some time. A small disclaimer, these mobility values will typically hold for temperature equal to 300 Kelvin and low doping concentration. Or we can say that for silicon, the electron mobility is 1350 and hole mobility is 480. Naturally, 
hole mobility is lower than electron mobility. And in the case of gallium arsenide, the electron mobility is 8500, which is substantially higher than silicon. And hole mobility is about 400. And in the case of germanium, electron mobility is 3900 and the hole mobility is 1900. There is a practice problem here. Uh, you should be able to solve this problem with the knowledge you have acquired so far. By so far, I mean from this discussion and our previous discussions on electron and hole concentrations in our previous lectures. Uh, it states that in a silicon sample at T equal 300 Kelvin, doped at an impurity concentration of Nd equal to 10 to the power 15 centimeter cube and Na equal to 10 to the power 14 per centimeter cube. You have to, it's explicitly mentioned that you have to use the electron and hole mobilities of this table. Your task is to calculate the drift current density if the applied electric field is 35 volt per centimeter. So you should solve this problem on your own. We will conclude our discussion here and we will discuss about this problem in detail in our next discussion. So if you fail, don't worry. Things will get more clear in our next discussion. Thank you.